Another exciting, exhilarating, and fascinating episode of Fallout 4 Mods Weekly. This is a series where I show you guys the premiere mods that were released each and every week for Fallout 4, basically a highlight of all the mods that did come out. It wasn't the fastest week for mods, but we got a few monumental releases and a few other ones that I know you guys have been waiting on for a long time. I feel like I say that all the time, but I feel like that does happen quite often. Kicking things off, we have the extended dialogue interface. You might be like, wait, we, we got this already. It's called full dialogue interface. It was released right after Fallout 4 was released. Basically, you could see all the different dialogue options. Well, no, actually, this is even taking that a step further. Extended dialogue interface, although having a few cool features right now, is really more of a platform for other mod authors to build off of. In Fallout 4, by default, there was only four dialogue options. You can have any more than that. A lot of people are really frustrated by this, and although mods like full dialogue interface allow you to see the the entirety of what you're going to say, that limitation was still there. Well, this is going to remove that, as well as it actually adds in a few other options, like little icons next to dialogue, so it'll tell you what's going to go on, whether it's a question, whether it's going to be accessing the shop, whether it's just going to leave entirely. But really, the exciting part here is the prospect of future large-scale mods like Fallout Cascadia, which this was made for, to be able to include more than four options as far as dialogue goes. Right now, the real big part about this is the Q mode. Obviously, now, as you are in the dialogue, there's little Q icons next to it, so you know Know if you're going to progress the conversation whether you're trying to get some more information or maybe you just want to exit or get to a shop but all around this is a huge mod that although right now isn't having a ton of functionality definitely will in the future as more people and more mod authors do support it so another long-awaited mod from a previous Fallout, we do have the Henry Repeating Rifle. This is going to be by D. Magnus and 500 SLR. This is a cool weapon. Obviously, it's a repeater rifle. Those are one of the most sought-after weapons in Fallout 4. Whenever I cover them in upcoming mods or just videos in general, people always get super hyped for getting these back into the game. Obviously, we have one option, that being the lever action rifle that was added in by Far Harbor, which is a really cool and fun weapon. The Henry Repeating Rifle isn't the highest quality mod. The main reason I'm covering it is because how hyped people get over these weapons. With that being said, it's still extremely usable. The sounds and the animations could use a lot of work, as well as the visuals do kind of have a weird reflecting nature. But at the end of the day, if this was a weapon you really missed, or a weapon category that you love, you could definitely add some attachments and modify this gun a little bit to have a ton of enjoyment from it. Shooting down all of the different enemies and friendlies in Diamond City was extremely satisfying. I just think these types of weapons in Fallout 4 and this new overhauled kind of combat system mesh really well together, and it really highlights how much of an improvement this is compared to previous Fallout games. All right, this mod's awesome. This is gonna be called HUD++. Basically, what this is gonna do now is as you find bodies on the ground, highlighting the different things in their inventory in that kind of quick swap thing that does pop up will actually give you their stats also now. So maybe it's a legendary weapon, maybe it's a new piece of armor that you're not super familiar with. You can see all the different stats right there quickly on your screen. This is extremely intuitive and it just works flawlessly and seamlessly in the game. I understand why this wasn't in the vanilla game, but if you really are playing Fallout on your third or fourth or even second playthrough, this makes a huge difference. It's really going to take a lot of time out of having to kind of pick between two different armors and things like that. And again, really just the seamless nature as to what it's integrated. Even if there's just a weapon on the ground, the stats will pop up next to it. So you can make a more informed decision while not having to worry about a ton of inventory management. Then we do have the Triss Modular Armor. This is going to be one of the main characters from The Witcher 2. This mod, as the title does suggest, is very modular. Every piece you're seeing can be kind of de-equipped and broken down, the boots, the gloves, the under armor there. Even further though, I feel like the armor is extremely detailed. There's a lot of intricacies here. I imagine this is going to be ported over from The Witcher 2 since CD Projekt Red does allow that. And the level of detail that was ascertained when originally creating this armor definitely shows in Fallout 4. It looks really nice on your character. And although mods like this definitely aren't for everyone, you could change around some of the different components of it with body slide if there's a certain aspect that you don't love at the same time maybe some of you guys will really love that certain aspect or i mean you could always put it on companion if you want to go that way also but beyond anything else if you are curious as to why my character was wearing a helmet and all around my character just kind of looked weird that I was that glitch here well this is the big reveal that i was hiding from all of you but now you get to see because i got to look at it a ton of times while recording this video so finally, we do have the Militia Rifle. Normally when I show you weapon mods, I do like a side-scrolling shot to all these different kind of beauty shots of it. Screw that. This is just a fun gun to use. It's a very simple weapon. There's a few modifications out there. You could do different grips, different stocks, as well as a few different barrel lengths and things like that. But just look at how good this looks, especially with Dust Bowl Overhaul. I feel like with my armor and just environment setup, it really meshes well with this little Militia Rifle. It looks pretty similar to some of the other weapons in Fallout 4. It's intentionally made to do so. It kind of reminds me of a mix between the Sten and the real life 
life as well as the assault rifle in Fallout 4. Like a little SMG assault rifle or something. But honestly, I just had a ton of fun using this. This is probably one of the most satisfying weapon mods I've had in a long time. And it doesn't have a ton of the awesome custom features. It does have custom sounds as well as the animations are reused, but do go really close to working. When you have to pull the bolt back, it actually does kind of glitch out a little bit and it doesn't fit perfectly, but it's really freaking close and it won't bother you. But again, just the way your character holds this and shooting down enemies, mowing them down with the high rate of fire is really freaking satisfying. I really can't stress that enough. Maybe the video is not portraying it in the best way, but just download this mod, try it out, and you'll see how much fun it is to use. Maybe you're just biased and really enjoy SMGs or machine pistols, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this week. Definitely a smaller week for mods. There simply wasn't as many new releases. But at the same time, we still got some quality content and stuff that hopefully you'll enjoy. HUD++ as well as the extended dialogue interface are two mods I'll see myself using over the long haul. As always, again, and thank you guys for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.